Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand together and sing this morning. The first song is to the tune of Morning Has Broken. sing the chorus, Emmanuel. Yeah. Hey. 
seated. you or is that me okay all right we're good all right good good morning Southside. how we doing good to be in God's house uh, this morning we're glad that you uh, made a choice to be with us and uh, of course I'm gonna make an announcement here in just a moment about uh, uh, how we can help those affected by the storm uh, in uh, in our area in our state and um, so I'll I'll give you an announcement about that in just a moment. I want to remind you of a couple things. This afternoon is our uh, church Christmas dinner. That's going to be at 4 o'clock at the Larry B. Mitchell uh, Center here in town. So I uh, hope you prepared something for that. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. We'll begin eating at 4 o'clock. Then we've got a couple little songs that we'll do uh, during that time frame. And it's just a good time for you to come uh, to be together. I believe we have someone that's going to take some pictures. So if you want to dress up in your festive Christmas colors, green, red, whatever it might be, uh, then uh, we're going to try and take your picture as you come in as an individual group or family, whatever it might be. And if you want to get a picture made with me and Teresa, that'd be fine. You can do that as well. So, All right, you put that out in your garden sometime in the spring. It will keep all the animals away. Tomorrow at 9 o'clock, if some of you can come and help us, we're going to be packing 2,000 door hanger bags um, we're going to do that down in the basement at the church, so if you want to park on that end of the, of the building, we're, hopefully it will be done in about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we've got several items we're going to put in each of those bags, and then we'll be able to pass those out come, Feb or start, come April, uh, just prior to Easter. So if you want to come and help us out, that'll be 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And not to be uh, confused, next Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, uh, we're going to be doing some training. There's going to be three training sessions for the gospel to every home, and we want to train you as we go to these homes, knock on a door and leave a pamphlet, leave this door hanger, uh, you may have an opportunity to pray with someone. You might have an opportunity to, to talk to someone about the relationship with the Lord. We want to give you some insights, some training um, things that you can have in hand that can help you and assist you. So uh, many folks are not uh, trained in doing that, so we want to give you a few things to help you with, with doing that. Our Lottie Moon Christmas offering uh, push is Jan uh, December and January. There are envelopes out in the foyer uh, for that. And uh, please be mindful of all of our missionaries that we want to support during that time. I wanted to show a video today starting with our today with our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. But I'm not going to do that because uh, of the uh, devastation from the tornadoes. I've got a short video I'm going to show you in just a second uh, that can help us uh, know what, uh, what we can do to help our folks out uh, here in in the state. Uh, if you went to North Boone, North Carolina, won't you stand? Uh, we had nine of our folks go to Boone, North Carolina uh, this past week. Yeah. Thank you. That we're, we're missing one of those today. Thank you for that. And uh, hopefully next week you all assign a spokesperson. Uh, I can't let all nine of you talk, you know, so, <laughs> we, we, but we'd like to hear from you. Uh, next week about that experience and I know I've already talked to at least one of them that said that they're planning on going back next year uh, with the OCC and and thank the Lord you all had a safe trip there and, and took part in that got a uh, thank you card from uh, Bud Taylor and his family thank you so much for the Gideon Bibles purchase in memory of Lorene more than this we thank each of you for your prayers thoughts calls and words of encouragement this church family is by far the best L Lonnie Bud uh, Taylor and Ann Taylor so uh, continue to pray for that family. Lift you, I want you to continue to lift up uh, R.J. Howard in your prayers. He's doing well. He was able to sit up in a chair yesterday uh, after having triple bypass surgery on Friday. He's, he's doing very well. So continue to be in prayer uh, for him uh, as he recovers. I want to share a quick announcement. Some of you uh, started well with reading your Bible through this past year, and maybe you struggled like the rest of us to try to get that uh, finished. I just got a, a, a gift in the mail uh, from John MacArthur and his ministry, and this, this is reading the Bible through the entire year. In this Bible, beginning on January 1st, it gives you each day of the year. Uh, there's an Old Testament passage, a New Testament passage, Psalms and Proverbs, and a brief little commentary if you want to read the commentary part of that that will take you all the way through uh, the reading the Bible in the entire year. Now, 
You can order these through gracetoyou.org, gty.org. I don't know if they'll get them to you by Christmas, but uh, I ordered this about two weeks ago and got it within 14 days. So uh, if this would be something for you to have in your hand, and we'll encourage you to walk through the Bible in the entire year. Got a little video, if we could show that video, please, at this time. And then um, I'll make a quick comment about that after. My name's Todd Gray with Kentucky Baptist Convention. I'm with Ron Crow, the Disaster Relief Director for KBC. Folks are asking how they can help with the devastation from the tornadoes in West Kentucky. Ron, what is Disaster Relief doing right now at this moment to help those folks? Currently, we have a number of DR volunteers on the ground in those affected areas doing the initial damage assessment, reporting that information back to us so that we can formulate an organized plan so that we can help these churches and communities the best way possible. So we're also beginning to build the teams and get our volunteers ready to mobilize. This is gonna be a long-term recovery project. If Kentucky Baptists would like to help right now, you can do three things. One is you can pray. Please pray for families impacted by these tornadoes. The second thing is that you can give directly to Kentucky Baptist Disaster Relief. Your gifts will help fund the recovery projects, the work that will be done on, on site. You can go to kybaptist.org and you'll see a disaster relief donation uh, button. Uh, you can also purchase gift cards and if you want to give those to Kentucky Baptist Convention or get them directly to pastors in West Kentucky, they can give those out in their community to help folks who are in need. But the most, th the most important thing we can do right now is pray for those who are, are affected. Thank you each for your care and support and involvement to help folks during this great time of need. All right. Now, if you go to the next screen, just want to uh, reemphasize what we are able to do. Number one is pray. And we're going to be careful to do that, to pray for all those that are affected. The storm devastated a number of areas in our uh, state. And uh, this is going to be months for these folks to recover uh, from this, uh, but also to donate. Now, a lot of folks ask about uh, who do we give the money to, and I just want to encourage you uh, to give it through in and through the Kentucky Baptist Convention, kybaptist.org, and you can get on that website and you can donate in and through that. That does not give any pen, not one penny goes to paying a staff person. Every penny of that goes to the assistance of those who are in need. And then the third thing is to purchase gift cards, as Dr. Gray said. Now, if you want to purchase a gift card, Lowe's, Kroger, uh, any of these, uh, Walmart, whatever you might want to do, and you say, well, how in the world can I get that gift card uh, to one of those local pastors? If you get that gift card to me, I will make sure I have uh, several friends in the Bowling Green area uh, in particular that uh, I know of that pastor churches, and they are already ministering to a number of families. A couple of those churches have already provided ways by way of sheltering for some families, and there'll be needs for them. So what better way for you to help out if you do purchase a gift card? Get that to me. I will get it to those pastors, and they will be able to help and assist those families uh, in their area and to minister, uh, not just provide the physical need, but also to meet the spiritual need uh, that many people would come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know Floyd Reynolds uh, is involved with Kentucky Baptist um, uh, Disaster Relief, and uh, he may be gone for a couple of weeks to help out with that in the Mayfield area. So what I'd like for us to do today, uh, before James comes and leads us, let's bow together, let's pray, uh, and uh, to ask the Lord just to work in the lives of those individuals. Father, we love you, we praise you. I thank you for today, Sunday, the first day of the week, the Lord's Day, where we get to get come together as a body of believers and to, to fellowship and to pray and to sing praises to Jesus and to hear the Word of God explained and taught and preached. But Lord, there are occasions where we are commanded and encouraged to pray for others who are in desperate need. And Lord, many of us may know some folks who are in, uh, put out right now with this storm that uh, devastated their homes and their areas. Over 500 plus homes in Bowling Green area, the Warren County area, over 100 plus businesses that were devastated. And Father, we pray right now, we pray that uh, people can be the hands and the feet of Jesus by simply offering a bottle of water, some simple food, some clothing, whatever it might be, some shelter. But Lord, also for the opportunity just to pray with people, to love on them in the name of Jesus so that Jesus is glorified. Father, we, we sorrow at the loss of the families and the individuals who have lost their lives. But God, we just thank you and praise you that you're a God who's always at work. And Lord, I pray, I pray for those pastors, those ones that I know that are personal friends of mine as they are ministering and and, Lord, I know of one church right now, as soon as church is over, they are going out in their community 
uh, to assist the, the people that are uh, in need. We pray for them today. We pray for our church fellowship, that what we can do in and through our church would be done for the honor and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for continuing to be on your throne. Thank you for being the Lord of lords and the King of kings. We give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand again and sing together. Hark the herald angels sing. <laughs> seated and children may go to children's church as Teresa is going to come and bless us with a song today let's be in prayer for her was not a silent night and there was blood on the ground you could hear a woman cry in the alleyway that night on the streets of David's town And the stable was not Bye. 
Joseph by her Appreciate that message and song. The phrase that would go with that is from the cradle to the cross. And that's what Jesus did for us. If you have your Bibles this morning for a few moments, if you'd open them to John chapter 3, the Gospel of John chapter number 3. If you have a copy of Scripture there today, we're going to come to what might be considered a passage of Scripture that all of you know. And uh, you probably know the entire chapter. And for most people, this might be the most favorite verse of Scripture uh, to many people around the world. And it might be in this one passage of Scripture that ties the entire uh, Bible together. As a matter of fact, if I were to ask you, um, what is your favorite verse of Scripture? Or if I were to ask you, hey, just quote a verse of Scripture, many of you would say John 3.16. And as a matter of fact, if your Bibles are open there to John chapter 3, I... I put this verse of scripture on the screen, and I'd like for us to quote it all together. This is from the New King James translation, so we're going to do this like we do in Bible school. I'm going to say, ready, salute, uh, pledge, but we're not going to have to salute. You don't have to stand. Uh, so I'm just going to simply say, ready, and read, all right? So you ready, church? You can read this out loud. Ready, read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life let's pray together father thank you for just in this one verse is the gospel for God so loved that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would have eternal everlasting life Lord, in a crowd this size, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that a majority of folks have prayed and invited Christ in their heart to be their personal Savior and Lord. But if there is one, just one, man, woman, boy, or girl who have yet to bow, confess their sin, repent, and trust Jesus, that today they would hear the gospel, they would respond to Jesus, 
they would believe in the gospel and trust Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Three things I want us to look at today. They're going to be on the screen if you just go to the next screen. I want us to look, first of all, at the expanse of God's love from this passage of Scripture. And then we're going to look at the expression of God's love. And then third, we're going to look at the experience of God's love. So let's just jump right in. Let's look, first of all, at the expanse of God's love. Uh, notice chapter 3 and verse 16. It's right here in chapter 3 and verse 16. It is the expanse, but it's in the first few words or the first phrase of John chapter 3. The expanse of God's love is defined by simply saying, For God so loved the world. Now, almost every Bible that I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've got, I've got to go home and check and look at this again. But in that passage of Scripture, John chapter 3 and verse 16, I have tried to always write down where it says, For God so loved the world, I always tried to write down my name, David, right there. And you can do the same thing. For God so not only loved the world, but God loved and insert your name there. That God so loved David that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal everlasting life. I know this is not in the Bible, but this is something that I just believe, that if I was still the only person born on the face of the earth, I was still born in sin, but God still sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. Can I get an amen here this morning? And it is the expanse of God's love. Well, the question is, who is it that he is talking about? Well, he's all actually talking about the ultimate creation of God, and that is mankind, which is recorded for us in Genesis chapter 1, in verse 31, where the Bible says, And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. You see, he didn't say that until after he made mankind, after he made Adam and Eve. He didn't say that while he was creating animal life and plant life and, and the galaxies. He only said that after he created man and woman. Now, the question is, does God love plant life? Now, I would answer the question, I, th I believe he does. He created it. Does God love animal life? I, I, I would say that he does because he created it. Does God love the heavens and the earth? Well, I would say that he does because he created it. He set the stars in the sky. He put the sun in the sky. He put the moon in the, star in the sky. The sun to create light for the day. The moon to create light for the night. But Christ did not come to give eternal life to animals and plants or the expanse in the sky. God, the Bible says, came and sent his son Jesus to die, not for plant life, not for the galaxy, not for animal life, but to die for mankind, his greatest of all creation. Now you say, now where do you see that in this passage of Scripture? Well, I'm going to call your attention to the first thing that's on that note, and that is there is a conversation that happens. Go back in John chapter 3, and let's just pick it up in verse number 1. I want to read this and reread this and just point out a few things from this passage of Scripture. There's an illustration that is given about in, in this conversation. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees. Now, the word there for Pharisees, that just simply means the, the sect or the group of people that uh, carried things to the letter of the law. They would study all day long to make sure that everything was in place. Every I was dotted. Every T was crossed. Everything was in place. So there was a man of the Pharisees. His name was Nicodemus. And it tells us a little bit about him. It says that he was a ruler of the Jews. So he wasn't just a common folk. He was part of the leadership. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Everybody just stop for just a moment and look up here for, at your pastor for just a second. Here Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night as a Pharisee, he's a ruler, and he comes to Jesus and he asks him the question or makes a statement. He says, Rabbi, teacher, uh, there is, uh, you've got to be someone who's come from God because no one can do these signs that you have done unless you've come from God. That is the context. Everybody still with me? Would you nod your head? Jesus doesn't get with the context. Jesus goes right to the heart of the problem. Look at verse number 3. And Jesus answered to him, said, Truly, truly, or verily, verily, I say unto you, unless one is born again... He cannot see the kingdom of God, Nicodemus said to him. Well, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? And Jesus answered, truly, truly, verily, verily, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now there in verse number 5, uh, many would suggest to us that being born of water and born of the Spirit, born of water represents physical life, born of the Spirit represents spiritual life, and I, and I would somewhat agree with that. 
uh, but I also believe that being born of the Word or born of the water is also an illustration of the Word of God because I believe that you need to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ before you can come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you still with me? Would you say amen? So he says here, unless someone is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. For the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from. Where it's going, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Verse 9. Nicodemus goes back to verse number 4 in verse nine, number 9. And Nicodemus says, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said, are you a teacher of Israel? You don't understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you that we speak of what we know. And we testify of what we've seen, and you do not accept our testimony. If I told you earthly things, uh, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? For no one has ascended to heaven, but he who has descended from heaven, and that is the Son of Man. There is this conversation that Jesus enters into with Nicodemus. And as I was studying this passage of Scripture this, this week, uh, I, I just some thoughts came to my mind about this passage of Scripture. And it came to my mind about when you have an opportunity to witness to someone about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can carry on a conversation with someone. You can talk about the weather. You can talk about the day. You can talk about their family. You can talk about their church. You can talk about everything under the sun. But if you are intentional about sharing the gospel with someone, at some point in time in that conversation, you've got to insert Jesus Christ into that conversation. Are you still with me? Say amen. You see, I can talk to anybody and everybody, uh, uh, you know, whoever I come in contact with. We can talk about the ball game last night. I know you all don't want to talk about that ball game last night. We can talk about all the things that come in a day's life. But when I'm talking to someone, as I, you've heard me say before, I never assume that someone knows Jesus until I find out whether or not somebody knows Jesus. Which means this, I can tell whether or not you know Jesus by your talk, by your life by how you function in your daily walk. If I don't know that, at some point in time, I'm going to insert into the conversation the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Christ does here with Nicodemus. Nicodemus had one motive, to find out who this rabbi, who this teacher was, how he can do these things. He must be somebody from God. And Jesus says, well, Nicodemus, that's one good thing, but your main problem is you've got a heart issue. And you need a heart surgery. Not only is there a conversation, but notice the second thing. Look in verse number 18. There's also a condemnation. If we're going to have the expanse of God's love, not only is there a conversation with individuals who don't know Christ, but there's also condemnation. Look in verse number 18. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe has already been judged already, because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. For this is judgment that the light is coming to the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, that his deeds might be manifested, having been wrought in God or done in the sight of God. And it's interesting there, if you look in verse number 19, where it says that men love darkness rather than light, uh, turn back a couple pages to John chapter 1. If you look in John chapter 1, if you have your Bibles there, and look in verse 4 and 5, Jesus, uh, John makes uh, reference to this. He says in John 1 and verse 4 and 5, In him was life, meaning Jesus, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, that's what the gospel does, and the darkness did not comprehend it, which means they didn't understand it, they didn't take it in. But here in John chapter 3, not only is there a conversation that happens, but there's also a condemnation. Now, the gospel is all about believing in the name of the Son of God, believing in Jesus. Listen, if you do not believe in Jesus, then you won't spend eternity with Jesus. You say, well, Pastor, everybody believes in Jesus. Well, I'm not talking about just a knowledgeable uh, you know, a mind belief of Jesus. I'm talking about an internal heart belief in Jesus. I want you to notice a couple questions here. The first question that I would have in this passage of Scripture is, who is it that will not be condemned? Who is it that will not be judged? He gives the answer in verse 18. He who believes in him is what, church? Not judged. Well, who is it that's going to be condemned? 
And he goes on, he says in verse number 20, he says, For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. You see, dear friends, you either believe in Jesus and trust him as your personal Savior and Lord, or you do not believe in Jesus and you'll spend eternity apart from Christ. So there's a conversation, there's a condemnation. But look at verse 16, we love this verse. There's a conversion. Now, what does it mean to be converted? Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does it mean to be converted? Uh, let me give you a couple references. You can jot these verses down, two of them, Matthew 18 and verse 3. Jesus said, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you by, will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. Luke says it this way in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Jot that verse down. He says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. No, preacher, what does it mean to be converted? The simple definition is this, to be changed over. All right, to be changed over. Now, I can't say that I'm a true mechanic. I try to work on everything that I possibly can because I'm too cheap. I don't want to pay somebody to do the work. So I try to do whatever I can, but there are some things I can't do. One of those things I cannot do is if I need to change out an engine in a car. If, if, I, if, my, engine, if my car has a, a 318 in it and I want to put a 455 in it, whether or not that's even possible or not, some of you can correct me after church is over, not during a sermon, amen? If you want to do those things, in order to do that, you've got to change something out. You've got to convert something out. You've got to change a lot of stuff. You've got to change a number of things in that engine, with that engine, in order to convert that into something else. You say, well, what's the illustration? Here's the illustration. You were born into sin, and in your sin, you cannot go into heaven because the Bible says that God cannot allow sin into heaven. So David in sin cannot go to heaven. What has to happen? I need to be converted. Can I get a witness here, church? I need to be converted into something else. I was dead in the trespasses of my sin, but praise God, through God, through his mercy and grace, I'm now changed into a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, in this conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus, I counted at least five times Jesus told him he must be born again. The question is, was Nicodemus ever born again? Was he? Well, hold your place there, and let me just turn over to John chapter 19, and let's find out. In John, John chapter 19, we get the rest of the story. John chapter 19, verse uh, 38 and 39. Did you find that? John 19, verse 38, after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one for the fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate granted permission, so he came and took away his body. Here it is in verse 39. Who's, who, who is it? Nicodemus. You say, well, how's this the same one? He gives us the answer. Who had first come to him by night, also came, bringing with a mixture of myrrh and aloes and about 100 pounds of weight. Well, the question is, was Nicodemus a born-again believer in Christ? Well, the answer to that is yes. There's no way that Nicodemus would have gone to the tomb to help anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with uh, Joseph of Arimathea unless he had been converted, born again, changed from the inside through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and through the forgiveness of his sins. Yes, Nicodemus was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So there's the expanse of God's love. Look at secondly, go back to John chapter 3. And I want you to notice the expression of God's love. Notice the expression of God's love. We go to that next screen there, please. It says in John 3, 16, the expanse of his love, for God so loved the world. The expression of his love is in the next phrase, that he gave his only begotten son. His one and only son. You see, the expression of God's love was that he sent his son Jesus to do one thing, and that was to be the Savior of of the world i don't have time to go into all of these i'll give you the references and then i'll give you the verse of scripture but listen to what the bible says first john 4 and verse 14 about jesus being our savior as we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son jesus to be listen the savior of the world 
Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. Waiting for that blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. You know this verse. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus is our Savior. John chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of the God, uh, Lamb of God, you finish it, church, who does what? Takes away the sin of the world. Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, For unto you is born in this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. God the Father sent His Son Jesus to do one thing, and that is to die on the cross for the sin of mankind, and He became our Savior. Listen, if you've trusted Him as your personal Savior and Lord. Jot this scripture down, and I'll read it for you. It's in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, we call this the kenosis or the emptying of Jesus Christ. And it tells us what happened with Christ. It says, Philippians 2 verse 5, Having this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard himself equality with God, a thing to be grasped. Listen to what verse 7 says. But he emptied himself. Taking the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow, those who are in heaven, those who are on the earth, those who are under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the father so when jesus christ came to this earth born in a manger he didn't wait to become a king he was already a king could i get a witness here church and he loved us so much that was the not only the expression of his love not only the expanse of his love let me share with you one more thing out of john chapter 3 and that is the experience of his love john 3 and verse 16 says for god so loved the world everybody repeat that with me for god so loved the world second phrase that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The experience of God's love. You see, dear friends, when you get born again, when you get saved, when you invite Christ into your heart to be your personal Savior and Lord, you get everything that God has to offer to you as one of his children. He doesn't hold any ba anything back. Amen? I mean, he gives you everything. So I want to know if I can explain this a little bit better let me just give you four real quick things here about this gift of god's love first of all i call your attention who the person of the gift who is the person it is jesus can i tell you dear friends that jesus christ is the greatest gift that you can ever receive amen <laughs> nothing absolutely nothing compares to salvation in jesus christ now, I don't know if that salvation is worn off of you or not. I hope not. But sometimes we live like that. Sometimes we stand in front of a, a group of people like this and you've got sour looks on your face and thinking like, what in the world happened? I don't know the Jesus that saved you, but the Jesus that saved me. Listen, dear friends, I know things happen. I know things can get bad. I know things happen in this world. But Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Nothing compares to that gift of salvation through Christ. You can open up all the presents you want to, one person said, but nothing, nothing, nothing will ever compare to receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. It's the greatest gift that anyone can ever receive. That's the person, Jesus. How about the price? Well, what was the price of the gift? The Bible says that Jesus came into this world to do one thing, and that was to die for our sin. Now, I know some people like to put uh, the S on the end of what that word, the word sin. It says, well, he died for my sins. And that could be accurate, but it really, in reality, it means that he came to die for your sin. You say, well, what is the one sin that I committed that Jesus Christ came to die for? Get this, church. It is a sin of unbelief. You see, dear friends, before you came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you did not have that belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. John even says it here in this gospel. He says here, Jesus said it here in verse 18 through 21. He says, those who do not believe 
they will be the ones who face the judgment and the condemnation. But for those who do believe, those are the ones that will inherit eternal, everlasting life. It is the sin of unbelief. The third thing I call your attention to is the people of the gift. The person is Jesus. The price is the, the cross. The people of the gift is given here in John 3, 16. For God so loved, what's the next word? The world. We get to be the recipients of this wonderful gift of salvation. Now, I can give you verse after verse after verse after verse. I'll only give you one. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus says, Wide is the road. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many will be on that road. Then he says, Narrow is the way. Straight is the gate that leads to everlasting life. And only a few will find it. And then in Matthew chapter 7, a little bit later, I believe it's verse 21 through 23, uh, they, they came to Jesus and said, Lord, haven't we done all these things, cast out demons in your name? Have we not done miracles in your name? Have we not spoken in your name? And Jesus will say these words, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father. The tragedy is this. Jesus came to die for our sin. The tragedy is most people will not receive him as their personal Savior and Lord. Amen? Well, what do you want for Christmas? Our grandkids, they get it. Teresa gives them a magazine. And you think that, you know, I know what you all did. I, maybe you remember the days when you used to get a JCPenney magazine or a Sears catalog. And, you know, you'd go through that thing. It would be sectioned off of whatever it might be. And you'd circle a handful of things. Not anymore. You give a child or a grandchild a magazine and they circle everything. Well, that's literally impossible. You can't get everything that you want. That's not going to happen. The parents and grandparents, I will teach you and I will share with you and you know what I'm about to say. The most important gift that you could ever give your child, your family, your grandchild is for them to know that there is a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ and they need to repent and confess and invite him into their life to be their personal Savior and Lord. And there is no better Christmas than for when someone trusts Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord. There's the person of the gift, the price of the gift, the people of the gift, and finally there's the purpose of the gift. Well, the purpose of the gift is salvation. We get to have eternal life with Christ. Five times, as I mentioned, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And then he also refers to it, you've got to be born of the Spirit and born of the flesh, born of the Spirit. It is the same thing he's talking about, you must be born again we'll go to that next screen there if we could please now let's go to the next one thank you dr steve lawson said this and i think this was a great quote jesus did not come to create a holiday he was born to die for sinners i want to leave that up for, for a second you might want to jot that down because that is a powerful quote jesus didn't come to create a holiday he came to die for sinners anybody here a sinner we're all sinners. Romans 3, 23, for we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter uh, 6 and verse 23, for the wages of that sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus the Lord. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, for God commended his love toward us that while we were still yet a sinner, Christ died for us. When I give the Roman road, I always insert John 3, 16 because it is such a powerful verse of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal everlasting life. Then we go to Romans chapter 10. Where the Bible says, Paul says, for with the mouth, uh, if, uh, for with the mouth uh, uh, you can, uh, if anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, for with the mouth you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, confession is made, and with the heart you believe unto salvation and in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, that great passage of Scripture, for whosoever believes in the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. Now, I, 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 I believe this to be true. Because people say, we have a whosoever salvation. The Bible says, whosoever believes in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, preacher, don't you believe that whosoever can be saved? And I do. However... What I want to call your attention to, salvation is not on your terms. It's on God's terms. You see, you just can't 
walk the aisle and shake the preacher's hand and say, I'm, I'm a believer in Christ. You just can't be born in a Christian home and say, because my mom and dad and my grandma and grandpa were Christians, then that, therefore that transfers over to me, that it's imputed to me that you're a Christian. You just can't say because your name's on the roll of a Baptist church or some church somewhere that you are on your way to heaven. That's your terms. God's terms is this way. Confess, repent, and believe. Confess your sin. I am a sinner. I have no hope in this world. I have no hope. I have no way to get to heaven on my own. What do I need to do? Turn from that. Repent from that. Quit living your own lifestyle and turn to Jesus Christ and receive him in your heart as your personal Savior and Lord. You say, well, why in the world would Jesus love somebody like me? All the bumps and the bruisers and the nicks and the cuts and the scars, what we say, what we see, how we act, what we do, what we've done in the past. Why would Jesus come and die for me? You know why? Because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his best his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting eternal life i've been to uh <clears throat> two funerals in the last two weeks and both of those individuals were believers in christ and can i tell you dear friends please hear me can I tell you, dear friends, they were not funerals of sorrow. They were funerals of hope. Even though that person had died, absent from the body and present with the Lord. And as David said, when his son uh, died, David said at the time of mourning was over. And they said, well, well, what are you doing? He says, well, he cannot come back to where I am, but one day I will go to be where he is. That's eternal life in heaven with God Almighty and his son, Jesus Christ. And all the pastors that preached, preached about the hope that we have in Christ. But that hope is given to us because God loves you. And he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting eternal life. Don't you want that life? You have that life? Jotted these scriptures down. They're not going to be on the screen at this point in time. There will be one, but... I put it like this out of Scripture. Love is what is love. Love is, first of all, it's from God, 1 John 4, 7. Love is manifested to us, 1 John 4, 9. Love is in His Son, Jesus, 1 John 4, 10. Love is mandated through us, which means it's manifested through us. We are commanded to love one another, 1 John 5, 3. And then love is promised to us. I do have this verse on the screen. 1 John 5, 13, great verse. These things I've written to you who do what? Believe in the name of the Son of God that you might know that you have eternal life and that you might continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now, I'm going to assume that many of you, most of you, know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord. One of the great things that a pastor gets to see and watch is when a pastor is teaching and preaching, he gets affirmation from the people. You all agree with something, you may not say amen, but a lot of times you'll nod your head in agreement of that. That's encouraging to the preacher. You keep doing that, the sermons keep getting longer and longer. Amen? <laughs> That's just how that works. We want that encouragement. But it's somewhat tragic to be able to preach in a crowd, in a congregation of people, and it's literally like it's going in one ear and out the other of those who have a void in their life, who don't have Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord. And they have a question in their mind that what do I need to do to know this Jesus? Can I tell you, dear friends, all of you would encourage me in this. Confess your sin. Turn from that sin and believe the gospel. Believe Jesus. Believe what about Jesus? Jesus came. He lived a perfect life. He went to the cross for the sin of mankind. He was buried in a grave for three days. Through the power of God, he became the first of the resurrection of the dead, being raised uh, to newness and life and being raised. from the People saw him witness that after his resurrection prior to his ascension. Now Jesus is seated at the right hand of God their Father, making intercession for us. But the most important thing he wants from us who know him is for those of us who know him to tell those who don't know him that they can receive this greatest Christmas gift 
than anyone could ever receive. Amen? <clears throat> has God been good to you? How good has he been to you? Very good, has he not? Very good to you. Life is short. James says that we're here one moment, we're gone the next. James says don't take any thought, don't worry about tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow holds, right? We've seen this lived out over the last 24, 48 hours. Your life is like what? Vapor. Here one second and gone the next. But in that short span of life, whether it's 90-something years, whether it's 15 years, whether it's 20-something years, 61 years, in that short span of life, the most important thing for us to consider is what have you done with Jesus in that time frame? If you've never said yes to Jesus, today is the day to say yes to Jesus. If you have said yes to Jesus, then God's been really good to you. Amen? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Our invitation is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a special. And if uh, you just simply want to come and pray and talk to the Lord and just share with him how good he's been to you while this song is going on, the words are going to be on the screen. James is going to be singing his song. But just listen. We're not going to have you stand. You're just going to stay seated where you are. And um, we're just going to listen to this great song of how good God has been to us. And, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your love for us. I can't even imagine what that love is like. But Lord, I'm thankful that I'm on the receiving end of that love. And Lord, there's not enough time here today for us to go through all the things that you've done for us that's been so good to us. But we just want to say thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you feel like you need to come and pray while James is singing this song, please do so.
But the best way that I can say it is this, God's been good in my life, I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep. God.